Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson with Principles of Management. We are now on chapter 10, only five more to go. And chapter 10 is about decision making. We all make decisions throughout uh, every day of our life, uh, some personal, some professional, some scholastic related. But uh, no matter what you're doing, you will be making a decision. Watching this video is making a decision. Uh, learning objectives is understand the meaning of decision making. No key causes for faulty decision making. Compare and contrast individual and group decision making. Is it better to do it as a group? Is it better to do it by yourself? Depends on who the people are, right? Uh, understand how to develop your own personal decision making skills. So if you don't already know how to uh, make a decision, uh, maybe you want to pay close attention and figure out a process. Uh, our decision making and the planning, organizing, leading, and controlling framework. As you can see, we were, came from uh, leadership, right, from the last chapter. Now we're on decision making. It, it follows a correct path. Uh, so, but but as I always say, that planning, organizing, leading, and controlling those are the four sectors in which mostly everything from management will fall under. So decision making it refers to selecting choices among alternative courses of action, which may also include inaction, meaning you're not going to do anything. So it could be, uh, so for instance, I'll, I'll, I'll take this, uh, like I always say, got, got the electric car, but my inaction could have been uh, not to buy the electric car. Uh, action would be to uh, purchase the electric car, and another form of action would be to purchase uh, a non-electric uh, car, right? So you have uh, action that you can take, and you have non-action as well. It's still a decision. Uh, increasing effectiveness in decision making is an important part of maximizing effectiveness at work, right? If you have a decision making process, you are typically going to make pretty good decisions. If you don't, it's likely that you may fail uh, or hit a couple fail points in regards to your decision making. So assessing uh, ethical concerns and their ethical concerns all throughout business. Is the decision fair? Right? Is it fair to you? Is it fair to everyone else? Uh, will I feel better or worse about myself after I make this decision? Uh, how will you feel about it? Will it keep you up at night? Does a decision break any organizational rules? If it does, you should re-examine what you're doing. Does the decision break any laws? If it breaks any laws, you should really uh, re-examine what you're doing and why you are there and things of that nature. And how do I feel if this decision was broadcast on the news? So for instance, one rule of thumb that they say, they say, if you are okay with doing something, then you would be okay with it being put on your community newspaper uh, with a big picture of you on it, right? So uh, if you're okay with that, then that's good. And I try to make, base a lot of my decisions off of that, uh, that if I make this decision and everybody knows about it, it's all good, then it's probably the right decision to make. Yeah, program versus non-program decisions. Uh, program decisions are straightforward decisions that occur frequently enough uh, that automated response is developed, right? Uh, if the light is red, I stop, right? It's program decision. This automated response is called the decision rule. Uh, now, some of you are saying, hey, if the light's red and if, if traffic's not coming, then I'm going to run through it. That is wrong. That is incorrect. And you probably need to contact uh, the ticket clinic, uh, hint, hint, uh, to get you out of a, a, a ticket like I did. Uh, Non-program decisions are unique and uh, require conscious thinking, uh, information gathering, and a careful consideration of alternatives, right? So if it's non-program decision, then you're going to have to make some type of, of you know, decision that, that's not normal, that's not a uh, part of the status quo. Uh, so um, if, uh, if, if you go to the airport and uh, they, they say that you know this this flight has been canceled now you're gonna have to make a non-program decision it, it's not an automatic decision to say okay I'm gonna get another flight on this airline uh, that airline might not be in that hub you may have to get a rental car and drive I mean, it's all kind of different decisions that you could possibly embark upon uh, so managers at McDonald's Hamburger University are trained on decision-making Right. Uh, if, if you look at McDonald's, they have a really good model. Maybe the food's not the best for you, uh, but I don't see too many people saying that it tastes bad. Right. Uh, but uh, but the decision making, it, it stems from their from their management training. They do that there, whether it be there or in and out. Um, both very successful, just different uh, business models of uh, in and outs great too. the uh, price point for what they pay their employees is a, is a lot higher than McDonald's. Uh, but but that's not within uh, McDonald's uh, business model or their framework. So uh, later on, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that in 
make sure that you have a, a proper understanding of how business truly works. Uh, so decisions commonly made within organizations. So I'm going to increase it a little bit so I can actually see it. Uh, level of decision, examples of decision, and what type, uh, what typically makes decisions, or who typically makes decisions. I'm sorry. So under strategic decisions, should we merge with another company? Should we pursue a new product line? And should we downsize our organization? Right. Those are all strategic. Those are all examples of decisions. Who makes those? Top management team, CEOs, and board of directors. So the people at the top are going to make those decisions because those are very tough decisions. And when you're dealing with people's lives and their livelihood and their family and taking care of their family, you must be very careful to make the right decisions. Uh, tactical decisions. What should we do to help facilitate employers or employees from uh, two companies working together? How should we market the new product line? And how should uh, who should we let go when we downsize? That's tactical. Oh, I'm gonna let John go because uh, John's not a not a very good performer, and he just doesn't be seem to be engaged with his work. As opposed to Pauline, I'm gonna keep Pauline because she's excited when she comes to work and she gets all of her all of her tasks completed. And the managers are the ones that are gonna make those tactical decisions. Operational decisions. How often should I communicate with my new coworker? Uh, what should I say to customers about new product? And how will I bal balance my new work uh, demands? And these are uh, employees throughout the organizations are going to uh, be the ones making those decisions. And now you as a manager, uh, or if you're not a manager, when you get to be a manager, you have to help them along with making those decisions. So this is a rational decision model. And it's funny because uh, you know I always you know review the PowerPoint before I you know create the video. Uh, just to you know, just to ensure I'm fully aware of everything, and you know, there's no bogies or whatever. But when I was reviewing it, I looked at this and I said, you know, I think I may print this out and I may put it up at my cubicle. Uh, rational decision making model. Uh, so number one, you want to identify the problem. If there's no problem, maybe you don't need to make a decision. Uh, two, establish decision criteria. So what criteria does my decision my decision have to meet? Right? Does it have to be uh, made within 24 hours? Does it have to be within a certain budget? Uh, number three, weigh the decision criteria. Four, generate alternatives. Now we're saying we need alternatives. Uh, am I going to do A? Am I going to do B? Am I going to do C? Five, evaluate the alternatives. Then is, is A a terrible alternative? I need to toss it out. And B and C are great. Let's just keep those two. Choose the best alternative. So if we threw A out and we have B and C, and I look at them and I say, hey, you know what, B is a lot better than C, then I'm going to keep the alternative of B. Then you want to implement the decision. So I have decision B and I implement it at step seven and eight. I want to evaluate the decision. Right. Uh, did I do the right thing or did I do the wrong thing? You just you have to evaluate it to know and understand. So the flaws of the rational decision making model and you know what there are flaws to everything right nothing's perfect nobody's perfect assumes that people understand what the decision to be made is right I might be talking about tomatoes and you might be talking about tomatoes right uh, so you know if, if if we're not on the same page as far as what the, the true decision is then the, then there's going to be a problem. Assumes that people know all of their available choices. Do you know all of your available choices? I can guarantee you uh, some of you guys have gone out and bought something and didn't know that you could get uh, that same something or that something that's enhanced somewhere else, right? I've, I've done it before, seen it later and said, oh, man, you know, I, I missed out on that. Assumes that people have no perceptual uh, biases, and that's uh, you know that's never going to happen. People always have biases and always have reasons for doing certain things. Assumes that people want to make the optimal decisions. Now you would think, as you all smart individuals on the other side of this video uh, taking these classes, you would think that people always want to make the optimal decisions. But that, my friend, I will tell you right now, is absolutely not true. Now they're for various reasons. Don't want to make a certain optimal decision because they don't want to work hard because all kind of different things and I'll give you guys a perfect example uh, I, it was a lady and she had been at the company 30 plus years and uh, they, they tried to automate the process you know get some you know some scanning in there some electronic documents but she said no on these particular claims I have to get them I have to write them out and by hand and that's that's how we're gonna complete them in this this and that and two days after uh, she left they automated the entire process and and made it simple didn't even need her position she was basically holding the position hostage and uh, it was funny in her exit interview that's the interview that you have with uh, with HR she they said well what did you like most about the company and you know what she said she said because I got to do whatever I wanted to do 
And that's obviously not the not the right thing in the way that you want to run business. Now, analysis paralysis. I'll try and make sure that I get a, a video about analysis paralysis uh, in there for you because this is so interesting and so funny. Uh, you spend too much time uh, spent gathering information, too much information, no decision gets made. Right. So I remember on Big Bang the Theory, uh, Shelton, he was uh, trying to uh, determine whether he was going to get a Xbox or a PlayStation. And so he went through all these scenarios, mathematical functions and everything else. Then he went to the store and he finally when this you know he's been there five hours and he says okay i'm ready to make a decision and he goes and they say hey, the, the register's closed buddy you know you've been in here all day trying to figure out which one you're going to do hey pull the trigger make a decision you can't be an analysis paralysis you're so scared to to fail uh you know you just have to do it uh failures are part of things uh, I, I failed plenty of times a guy uh, once told me and he didn't tell me too many great things as a vice president i used to work for but one good thing he did tell me he said fail early and fail fast meaning if you fail do it early before it costs the company a lot of money and fail fast so that you can go back and get the correct solution great advice so then you have the bounded uh, rationality model. Individuals knowingly limit their options and choose uh, the best alternative without conducting an exhaustive uh, search for alternatives, right? So we know that they're saying, you know what, there's some other alternatives out there, but eh, we're, we're good with these. Um, Satisfice may occur, um, which uh, refers to accepting the first alternative that meets the minimum criteria. Ah, this is good enough, right? Like, so you go in the refrigerator and you're looking for some food. Maybe you want a steak, but you know what? You see some meatloaf and say, ah, the meatloaf's good enough. I'm going to go ahead and make the decision on that. Or you could, you know, hop in the car and go down to, to Black Angus and, and get you a steak and eat it there or bring it home or, or, or whatever. But, you know, there sometimes people are just looking for the first alternative that meets the minimum criteria. And then a quote-unquote good enough decision is made. And people do that all the time with employment uh, decisions. They they hire a person because, you know what, that person's good enough. I'll just roll with them. You know what, hold out. Don't do it. Uh, it, will, it will hurt you in the long run. Uh, making intuitive decisions, right? So uh, intuition or mother's, uh, mother's intuition, uh, those are things that you need to... Um, you need to keep at the forefront of your mind. Uh, so within a given situation, experts make decisions, uh, scan the environment for cues to recognize patterns, right? So I want to look at trends. I want to look at cues. I want to see how things are going. And then that's how I'm going to make my decision. Uh, uh, so for instance, uh, you, you could call it your spidey senses, right? So if you go down an alley one day and you get mugged, right? Uh, three weeks later, uh, you're walking somewhere, you're probably not going to go down the alley. You use your intuition and say, you know, it's probably not the best thing for me to walk down that alley. I should probably just take the long way around. Uh, once a pattern is recognized, uh, they can plan a potential course of action based on their prior experience. My prior experience says I should probably uh, walk around this alley because I may end up getting hurt. Uh, so the creative decision making process. Uh, step one, problem recognition. I, so you always have to recognize what the problem is first. Uh, two is immersion. You want to jump right in, get all immersed in it. Uh, three, incubation. Uh, so you want to, you know, maybe take your group, set it apart. Let's find out what the true solution is. Four, illumination. We want to put, you know, some spotlights on it and say, hey, this is what we're looking at. This is what we plan to do. And step five, verification and application, right? So you want to verify this is what you want to do. Then you want to apply it. And then they don't have a step six on there, but you always have to evaluate uh, what your decision is uh, afterward or the, the response or the, um, you know, the outcome of your decision making. So uh, for creativity, you have flexibility, fluency, and originality, right? Those all feed into uh, the creativity and your creative process. Enhancing and improving creativity, brainstorming and wildstorming, idea quotas and crowdsourcing, right? So just basically saying, hey, we want to come up with a whole bunch of ideas. Then we want to eliminate the bad ones and we want to keep the good ones. Then we want to uh, discuss uh, which one would actually be best. Uh, been part of many, many brainstorming sessions. Uh, what you have to remember is that just because Demetrius has a stupid idea, you can't just you know tell me to keep my stupid idea to myself. It still goes up on the board, and then uh, during the second round, when you guys are actually determining what what do we keep and what do we get get rid of, that's when you can tell me I'm stupid. Well, don't tell me I'm stupid, but that's when you can uh, eliminate my stupid idea. Uh, 
enhancing and we can get this one in right before the 15 minute mark enhancing organizational creativity so you have team composition team process leadership and culture all uh, lead into and are very uh, big components of enhancing your organizational creativity all right so we're at slide 20 of 32 we'll do the remaining 12 slides on lecture uh, part two this has been uh, Demetrius Wilson principles of management chapter 10 lecture part one I will see you shortly